but eight that is going to be including pastor. I will encourage us to think one shot at life. Take it all the time. Take one shot at life. Remember that uh, we are here for the purpose and there is reason why God made us. We are so unique. We are unique. We are specially made by God. And there is a purpose for that. God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for your life. And God desires that you fulfill that purpose. So we should work with God so we can bring His purpose to pass in our life. Differently, God made you. Differently, God assigned something for you to accomplish. I was reading uh, something about snowflakes. That never, no two snowflakes are ever the same. Ever since men have been, uh, have been aware of snow, no two snowflakes are ever the same. So that's how awesome God is. Because we're wondering with billions of people, how can God? You know, create us different. We were created uniquely. So you are so special. Every day is also special. No day is repeated. Today, when today is gone, by 12 midnight and it's gone, it's gone, it's never going to come back again. It's going to be another day. So you are so special. Understand the fact that because we are special, you have a special assignment. I just pray that God will help us so we can realize this in Jesus' name. Amen. I say, I see from verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. For the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. God is telling us that with all these things I've given you, I want you to arise, I want you to shine, I want you to shine, to, to shed your light, to be darkness in this world. I want you to do something in somebody's life. Because the glory of God is risen upon you. We cannot carry God's glory and just sit down there. We need to carry this glory around. We need to uh, do something in this generation. So that God can remember you for good. So that the people will remember you for good. You are writing an epistle that somebody is going to read later on. Or somebody is going to read after you have departed. Or somebody may, may possibly even read it while you are still alive. So write something good. When people are going through your life memoir, let them be able to see positive things you have done in this generation. So God is telling you today, in that Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 3, that you should arise. It's a mandate. Arise and not only just to arise, but shine. Because the light has come. We need not to pray for the light. The light is here. And the glory of God is upon you. So, Jesus was made uh, a kind of model for this message. I was shot at life. And Jesus, three things he did during the time he was here uh, to really shine the light, to really carry God's glory around. He lived the word. He was not just speaking, he was, he was living what he was saying. Jesus was a good example. He was not just talking and talking. You know, if, it's, it's not enough to say I'm a Christian. Your life, your attitude, your, you know, the way you talk, what you do, the way you impact people's life, the people in contact with you is so important. One child at life, don't this time you are here. You need to help somebody, you need, they, they need to see Jesus in you. So Jesus, while he was here, he was going around doing good. And the second thing he did, he was doing good works. He was doing good works, healing people, feeling people, preaching to people, asking them to comply, even with the law of the land. He was telling them, pay your tithe, pay your tax, keep what is for season for season. What is meant for government, need to government. So Jesus was going around preaching the word, telling people the, the importance of why they are here, the importance of our relationship. Telling us we should love our neighbors like ourselves, telling us to, to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, teaching them all these things. And doing, going around doing good. This, the third part was Jesus fought the war. Even this, when you determine in your heart to do something good in your generation, remember, enemy will stand up to fight against you. 
Satan does not want anything that is good. Satan wants us to live our life and make it of no effect. Just want us to be here and waste all the time. That's what Satan wants. But when you begin to do something positive, he's going to rise against you. So he did the same thing to Jesus. He rose again against Jesus Christ from day one. Try to destroy his purpose. Try to destroy his destiny. So remember, Satan has nothing good to give. His allow is ready to destroy our destiny. But we are not going to allow him. If you allow him, that is when you do something. You can resist him. If you resist the devil, the devil will, will, will leave you. But if you confront the devil, that is when we have the problem. So what I'm saying today, in this one shot up like this part, in this opening part, do not give Satan any chance at all. Jesus did not give you any chance. Jesus fought it to the last. And when, after all, after he finished everything, Jesus said, it's finished. It is finished. So it's always a battle we have to fight until you leave this place. One shot at life. You do not give a chance for the enemies to delay your destiny. You have to work hard with God. You have to cooperate with God to ensure that you follow the teachings. It's not enough to just listen to messages, but you work hard. Never wants people to listen, but doesn't want them to apply what they are listening to their lives. You we have to determine in your heart. We have to cooperate with God so you can so you can apply God's word into our lives. So that we can fight this battle. It's a good, it's a good battle. It's a battle of faith. It's a good war. It's a war that at the end of it all will be given a crown that will not face. The, the, the way forward. So uh, I put in about six things that we can just review in this concluding part, part eight of one shot at life. Just this, uh, these six points are just advice. Advice. We all know the realization. We know it's a reality. That at the end of it all, we have a time to spend here, and at the end of it all, we will live here. Because outside the body is present with the Lord. If you have given your life to Jesus as personal Lord and Savior, if you have accepted Him to your life, when you depart this place, you will go to be with Him. For anyone that has not given his or life to Jesus Christ, for anyone who has not accepted Christ as his personal Lord and Savior, when you depart this place, you will be separated finally, eternity, eternal separation from God. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, think Jesus. Think about what he did on the cross of Calvary for you. Salvation is free. You need not to do anything, it's been paid for, full payment. All you have to do is just to accept it. Confess your sins, accept Christ into your life, and then join together with showing up that so you can grow in God's knowledge. So if you have not done that, you need to do it. Now, if you have done it, you need to continue to maintain it. But remember, now that you have done it, if you are a Christian, the reason why God did not take you home. Immediately you are giving your life to Christ is just because you are the one now to carry that light all over, to carry the glory of God all over, to preach the word, to shine the light, to lift body from somebody's life, to encourage somebody to follow the Lord, to help somebody in the little way you can, you can do, to show love to somebody. That is why you are here. So, point four. Then we need to keep focus on these things. Whatever your hands might do, either in your vocation to shed the light, to, uh, to shine the light, either in your ministry, either in the family, whatever your hands might do, keep focus. Keep your eyes on the finish line. It will be over when it is over. Just keep your eyes on the finish line. Do not allow any distraction there or there. Either in your business, either in providing for your family, either in the ministry, either in working for the Lord, keep focus. Keep your eyes on the finishing line. In anything your hands find doing, make sure that you do it thoroughly. Be true in all things that you are doing. Remember that opportunities sometimes will come, you will not have it again. When they come, definitely on you, knocking at your door, that might be the only chance that you have. 
So that shines, give it your best. Prioritize. You know, don't just do things anyhow. Place the best thing, make the first thing the first thing. You know, say seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, let all other things follow. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the other things will be added. We need not to seek first the other things. So let's arrange things in the order that God has taught us to do. The Bible is complete. The word of God cannot fail. So God has taught us how to handle things in life. Let us follow all those teachings. You cannot please everybody. I want you to know that. This one shot of life that you have, you cannot please everybody. The Bible says, um, you should love your neighbor like yourself. You love your neighbor like yourself. It is not baboon to love your neighbor more than yourself. Some people, they, 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 they prefer to please people than to please God. That is, that is, that is not good. You please God first. No matter what you do, people will still talk about you. So if you are trying to say, I don't want them to talk about me, that's why I'm doing this, that's why I'm doing that, that is not true. They will talk about you. Either you are doing good, you will not do bad in Jesus' name. People have something to do to, to say about you. So focus. Let's see Philippians chapter 3 from verse 13 to 14. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 13 to 14. So you see, winners, they, they, they focus their energies. They keep their energies and they focus, don't waste energy. Winners. If you see people running, those people, those people have seen taking the gold, they run and they focus all their energy on that, on that uh, uh, game. And, and that's where they can get the gold. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Verse 14 of that Philippians chapter 3. I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You are a winner in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't be a loser. See, people that lose, I've told you before, they run in all directions. They get confused. They don't know that to go here or to go there or to go here. They run in all directions. But winners, they focus. They concentrate all their energies when they believe in, in, in a mission. They give it their best. When they believe in a cause, they give it their best. They, they ensure that that cause will succeed. And that's a good attitude. Even if one is in the last lap of one's life race, what can see succeed? Success is ours in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that we flinch strong in Jesus' name. Uh, number two. Let us be a prisoner of yesterday. One shot at life. Never be a prisoner of yesterday. Never dwell on faults and failures. Never dwell on mistakes. You do, have, you do not have time to waste. One shot at life. You do not have time to waste. Forget about what has gone, what has gone has gone. Don't dwell on faults, don't dwell on mistakes, don't waste your time on all the errors you have committed in the past. Let them go with the past. Correct your mistakes and carry on your life. It's one opportunity that you have. Never bless, never will continue to remind you. All your errors, all your mistakes, all those sins you have committed, never will continue to remind you. All that God requires from us is to go, to go ahead and sin no more. That is, go ahead, don't repeat those mistakes. If you, if you have seen that, and you have realized that it was a mistake, you have to have the desire not to repeat it. That's what's important. You have learned from that mistakes. You have seen the opportunity to, to, to have that experience. But if you don't concentrate and understand why that mistake was made, you may repeat that mistake. So when you learn from that history, the opportunity you have now is not to repeat it. So you let it go. Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43 from verse 18 to 19. Isaiah 43 from verse 18 to 19. Do not remember the former things. This is what God is telling you. Do not do what? The former things. One shot at night. You don't have time to dwell on, on those past, those errors we have committed. Be, like you said, now consider the things of old. Don't 
give it any consideration. Don't spend your precious time on the past, on those mistakes. Do not do it. It's one shot at night. You don't have time to waste. This is reality. Are, we, are, are you with me? Verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. God wants to do a new thing in your life. But want to think new, new things. God wants to do a new thing in your life. You don't have time to, you know, all this, he said, he said all those but they complain things that go. Let it, let it go. That's what this Isaiah 43 is telling us. Say now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will put a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That is promising that you have a bright future. You have great future ahead of you. The thought of God for you is fantastic. It's a thought of peace, a lot of evil. He will give you a future that will give you hope. Amen. Amen. Please, ponder on these three points. Ponder on these things. Number three. Number three. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is too late for God. It's not too hard or impossible. What should that matter? Never think that there is something in your life or you are facing something that is impossible for God to resolve. As we live our life, we will continue to face challenges. Men are meant to resolve challenges. Amen? Amen. That is why we are here. We are in this world to crack any nut, to crack any bow. We God with us. As long as God is with us, there is nothing that should be impossible for us. Nothing. Develop a good faith. Even if you are in the final, dead last of your life, if you are in the final, Final quarter of your life. It is not too late for that. God can still make that time glorious. Amen? Amen. God can still make your later years of greater blessings. He has done it in the past. Never you think that there's a time in your life that is too late, or there's a time in your life or this one shot at life that uh, you will just regret if I had known earlier. We will be saying that, oh, if I had known this before, if person would have told me this before. As of have made this message, the first message is when he started to, to preach. Listen to me. It's not too late for all of us. You may say, if I had done this, I would have done this. Even if you are different, even if you even if it's not that you are having your understanding. That does not mean that God will not still do something fantastic in your life. Job chapter 42. Job is a very good example. With all that he lost, with all that he lost, you will have thought that. <laughs> that is it for him. But God did something fantastic in his life that at the end of his life he had a story to tell. Good testimonies. He, he was celebrated. You will be celebrated in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. You will have a story to tell. Good story in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Look at uh, Job chapter 42 from verse 10. Job 42 from verse 10. And the Lord restored those losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. By the time the Lord will return back what has been stolen in your life, the enemies will come and they will be surprised. Amen. The name of Jesus. Amen. You will be thinking, am I dreaming? So God can still do this? He can renew your strength. Yes. God can make you to work stronger. You may you know, see, the, the last half of your life, if you are there or if you are the last part of your life, Whatever, or you are the half of your life, whatever you may be right now, God can still renew your strength. Amen. He can do it. He can make you to walk up with wings like eagle. Amen. He can still make you to fly that will never retire. He can make you to walk that you will not be weary. He said, God, I can do that. Look at what he did to, to Job here. So indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then all his brothers, all his sisters, and all those who had been his acquaintances before came to him and made food with him in his house. That will be blessed to the say that you will, you will be a blessing unto people in the name of Jesus. People will come and they will come and rejoice and die with you in the name of Jesus. See, that's what people like to do. They like to come and rejoice. Nobody wants to come and share pains. In natural. They want to come and do what? Rejoice. They, come, they want to come and eat with you. You don't want to come and share sorrow, uh, sorrow, sorrow or pain or anything. The Lord will bless you that even the world will see that blessings and they will glorify God in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. All his brothers, everybody, came 
to, came to him and made food with him in his house. And they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him. After they finished the celebration. Now look, each one gave him a piece of silver and each a ring of gold. Verse 2, verse 12. Now the Lord blessed later days of Job. The Lord can bless anybody's any state of God's life, any time of, of, of your life, the Lord can bless. It's never too late, it's never too early, it's too God, it's never too, it's, it's a story that is too hard, it is impossible, not with God. So begin to look up to God for something fantastic. Begin to think one shot of life. You don't have time to, 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 to concentrate or to be thinking on negative. Have a positive attitude towards life. Knowing fully aware that God is alive. Knowing fully aware that God can do everything. Knowing fully aware that God can supply to all needs. He can supply to all needs. Verse 12 again. Now the Lord blessed the later days of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 cannons, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. All he lost, he looked back at that state now of his life. That was the end time of his life, and God blessed him. Bible recorded that Job lived another one, he lived for 140 years. He saw his children, children, children to four generations. Can you imagine that? So, I don't know what state you are in your life. This is the reality. Because you are a Christian, a thought of God for you is a thought of peace, not of evil. To give you hope, to give you fusion. Bright fusion. I don't know what you are looking for to get to do. It's not great at all with that. One shot at life. Don't dwell on anything negative. Believe God. Never you listen to the Father, it is impossible. With God, Nothing is impossible. Yes. Develop a wavering number four. Develop a wavering faith in God. Make your faith strong. The God that we are serving is all knowing. He will see you through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God can always turn anything around for good. Anything. God can always turn anything around for good. Anything the enemy may think is evil, God can turn it back to be good. We are not saying this just like, you know, we are just encouraging, you know, I'm saying facts. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, Ecclesiastes 11 from verse 4 to 6. He who observes the way will not sow. If you are a Christian, you are, you are a farmer, or you are just observing the way, you are not going to sow. And he who regards the class will not reap. As a Christian, we have to believe God's word, we have to continue to move. Whatever is happening is one shot at life. Keep moving, keep moving, keep believing God, keep trusting God. As long as there is life, there is hope. Oh. There is hope. He who comes out the way will not sow. And he who regards the class will not read. As you do not know what is the way of the way, or how the boats go in the womb of her, of, of her who is with a child or child, so you do not know the words of God who makes everything. We know there is some, some things are still useful. Some things are still useful in life. Remember the case of some people gathered themselves together and they said they want to have Jesus in life. They look for all the. So in my sermon, let me just put this in there so I don't lose track of this sermon. They look for people that are extra brilliant. They want to have super brilliant people in the world. So they look, they look for people that are extra brilliant. Jesus. The, the noble qualities of those people. People who are born into Olympics and want gold, they look for them. Top notch professors. And they got all their you know, uh, spams. And they donated that in the bank. They stand back. And then they, they, you know, all this, something like IPF. They did all those things and then any, they were looking for women and they got some women that we carry those fertilized eggs of those brilliant people selected. They believe that 
With that, they will also have people that are villains. Are you listening to me now? Maybe there was a documentary on that in the recent time they said. This is where I'm going. We don't know what we can do. We cannot live in that. We cannot control to make human beings. We cannot control to do those things and think that it will just go like that. Do you know that? Later, later part in life, they did whatever they were doing, all those children that were born, they did not have what they thought they would have. Among those children, they got some that were sick. They thought those people would also be, you know, brilliant as the, uh, the, 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 the project something they got from those brilliant people. It was like that. We don't know this guy, this guy. He's good. There are people that are fantastic, brilliant, that their, their parents are just, they have never been to school. There are people that um, are so blessed now, they, are, they have money, they are rich, they are blessed by God, and their parents are poor. So God does that. We don't know what God can do. You cannot look at the wind or look at where the wind is going, this and that, to determine God can change this anytime. Yeah. Don't think that, oh, this thing, that pastor is saying, it's not for somebody like me. My family is like this, my family is like that. If my family would have been this, there are some things you do not choose. You are, you are not the one that shows your parents. Right? You did not choose the country that you will come from. These things were chosen by God. So God has chosen these things as determined that you will be excellent. Am I the name of Jesus? Yeah. I don't know your destiny. He knows everything about you. He knows what you are going to accomplish. But what I'm saying is that you have this opportunity. Make better use of this opportunity. Do not limit yourself. If you are limiting yourself, it means, it means you are limiting God. God can touch your life. God can turn things around in your life. God can make you to do what you never ask. You never thought in your, in your brain that you can do. That's the kind of God we are serving. But this is your own time. Believe God. Trust God that you will arise. You will shine because His light is in your life and His glory is upon you. And you will shine in your generation and people remember you for good in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 6. In the morning, sow your seed. And in the evening, do not withhold your hand. Do not say, This is my evening time. Let me just don't do anything. Don't do that. Keep playing. There is no stage in one's life what God cannot play. Keep playing. Keep studying. When you stop to, to study or when you stop to learn, that is when you stop knowledge. You don't want to stop. You continue to learn. No time that you can say it is too late. For you do not know which will prosper. You know, it might be the one that will be at this later, later time of your life that will bring greater fruit into your life. You don't know. So the Bible is advising us. In the evening, do not withhold your hand. It's one sharp reply, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. You don't know. So trust God. Do your best and allow God to do His own in your life. Amen. Amen. Don't trust in the hand of flesh. The hand of flesh will fail us. There are so many things I want to tell you, but this one is very important. Don't stress yourself. If you work on something and you did not get expected results, this one should apply. Now, this is just general advice for all of us. Pray about it, seek God's wisdom, and then go to bed. Are you listening to me? You work on something, you do not get results, don't stress yourself. Go to bed. Relax. It's always new in the morning. The energy is new in the morning. You get more opportunity in the morning. Things are always better, fresh and new in the morning. The night is gone. In the morning, a new day dawns. With God, there are, there, there are new masses for every new day. With God. You try something, the new day goes sleep. In the, in the morning, it's the, the God's mercy is renewed every morning. His faithfulness is great. Your life has come. And if God goes upon you, check with me Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3 from verse 22. Lamentations chapter 3. Through the lost masses, we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. So, 
It's always better in the morning. Always have that at the back of your mind. Work on something. We used to do that while we were in the school. Sometimes we try to solve a problem in mathematics. You work and work on it, you didn't get results. What do you do? You leave it, you go and sleep, you wake up in the morning, you grab it again. For the most part, you get the answer. Because everything is fresh. Your brain is relaxed. Your system is energized. New synergy. Wake up, you have it. Seek understanding, seek wisdom. Don't run yourself dry. Amen? Amen. Don't do what? Amen. Run yourself dry. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9 from verse 15. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whoever I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on, on, on whoever I will have compassion. So then it is not of him who wins, nor of him who runs, but of that who shows mercy. Don't, don't, some people they, they want to be they want to be like a big gate overnight. They run around, they run around, they run around, they run, they run themselves dry. You don't want to do that. It's God that will bless you. It's God that will bless the work of your hands. It's God. What shall that life? Some they will walk, 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 they will never remember that. It's God that can show us. Is that Proverbs chapter 10? Proverbs chapter 10. From verse 21. The beast of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. Seek wisdom, go and do every issue in life. The blessings of the Lord makes one rich, and he has no sorrow with it. It's God's blessings. Any blessing that is having sorrow, some they say they are blessed, but they are every day they think about the blessing they are sorrow. What kind of blessing is that? I don't want that blessing that might remember Jesus. Amen. Any blessings I will remember, or you will remember the source of getting that blessing, and then you will be with it, it's not a good blessing. It's God's blessings. See, the list of the righteous is very, but who's died for lack of wisdom? The blessings of the Lord makes one rich, and he has no sorrow with him. To do evil is like report to a fool. To do evil is like sport, it's like sport to a fool. But a man of understanding has wisdom. Grab this understanding. It's only God that can be foolish with us adding sorrow. So all these people, there are people that they just think that is when they run around and the more they run, the more they will be successful. It's not true. It's God that can bless the work of one's hands. So that's why we are asking for God to make things work out for good for us. One shot at life. It's one time you have, it's one life you have, you got to make better use of it. If you have understanding, grab this understanding. Sometimes people perish because they have no understanding. And that's why we are discussing this. It is not of him that will it, nor of him that runs, it's of God that shows mercy. We're asking for God's mercy, we're asking for God's grace. We are praying to God that this life that we have, we shall enjoy every moment. And you will enjoy every moment that I'm saying. The final one, we are going to pray right now after this one. In all situations of your life, have attitude of drawing near to God. This one should apply. Have that attitude of drawing nearer to God. Don't withdraw from God for any reason. It may be you are facing a challenge in your life. It may be you are in a need. Don't draw away from God. When it is good, come to God. When it is challenging, do what? Come to God. Do not at any time run away from God. Where shall we go from your side, O oh God? Do not run away. James chapter 4, verse 8. James 4, verse 8. Verse 8, verse 8. Draw light near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and prepare your ass, you double-minded. When you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. That is God. When you appreciate God, let's have an attitude of appreciating God all the time. When you appreciate God, God will appreciate you. In the Bible, Jesus gave that ten members 
were healed, only one came back to say thank you. I mean, attitude of kindness came. And we were told that that leper had another, another, another miracle. He was made whole. Because he came back to say thank you to God. There are people they don't even know how to say thank you to God. They only come to God when they are in need. And as soon as they get that need, what would they do? They go out. Until they are in another need before they come back to God. In this one shot applied half attitude of drawing closer to God, half attitude of coming closer to God at any moment of your life, in any situation of your life. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Father, we thank you this afternoon. We worship you because we are good God. Thank you for this wonderful time and this opportunity that we have to be in the, in the church. We thank you today, in the last Sunday, in the month of, of October 2014, we know this day when it's gone, it's gone. It's a great example about our lives too. Lord, it's one shattered life. That is an opportunity that we have. That says after death is judgment. It is appointed unto man once to die. After this is judgment. We know we are here for a purpose one time. And when we are gone, we are gone. Father, help us to spend our days with wisdom and understanding the right name of Jesus. That, that anything we lay our hands upon will prosper us in Jesus' name. Amen. Help us to write a peace that others will see and will glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Help us to write a book that a memoir that people will read and you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Blessed be you forever. Amen. In Jesus' name we are praying.